Hello everybody, welcome back to Rich and Bella Crafts, Richard here, I hope you're all well. So if your craft room is anything like my craft room, I'm guessing you will have um, a little basket like this. Oh, you might have a huge, massive box, I don't know, <laughs> um, where your scraps end up. Um, and you will probably have um, some strips that look like this, and ends of book pages, and bits of coffee dye paper, and all sorts of just lovely combinations of um, papers that you've cut off the ends of, for whatever reason, um, and they are too good to go in the bin. So I thought today we would do something I haven't actually done with you all before. In fact, I've never done this before um, because it does. It did actually for a while cause me a little bit of confusion um, over what the differences were. So we've talked quite a lot in the past about uh, master boards. Um, obviously, the term collage gets mentioned and thrown in the air as we're making master boards. Um, but I have often wondered, well, what is the difference between um, a master board, a collage and franken paper? So I kind of did a little bit of research and um, watched some different people's videos and um, looked at some... Actually, there's not a lot of stuff on Pinterest about franken paper. <laughs> Just going to put that out there. Um, so if you are quite a keen franken paperist, um, get some pictures on, on uh, Pinterest because we're looking for them for inspiration. <laughs> um, so I thought we'd have a go today at making our own um, franken paper um, and just seeing where it goes. And then I kind of got a little idea about what I want to do with it. Um, and we'll see if it works out. So, oh, by the way, welcome to our day. Oh my goodness, I'm not even sure what day we're on. Day 12 are we on? I think we're on day 12. <laughs> I hope that's right and I'm going to have to edit over this, um, of our 100 days uh, RAB challenge. Um, we're doing the 100 days project where we are attempting to complete a craft project for 100 days or 100 days worth of craft projects. Um, short um, and, and you know easy to do tutorials. So that's what I'm looking for these little projects for, but also would like to kind of give you some variety as well. So Franken paper. Well, the only thing I can get from Franken paper is that it is called Franken paper because more often than not, you tend to stitch through it and it then looks like Frankenstein's monster. That's the only thing I can think of. Otherwise, I have no idea at all where the um, terminology for it came from. It's quite bizarre. Um, but what I did learn today was the difference between collaging masterboarding and how you put together your franken papers so i'm going to explain to you you all know how to make a collage you all know with a collage you would start with i don't know a book page imagine that's still in one piece um and then you would add um more kind of these kind of neutrals i suppose to create a background so a collage is it's the bit before the masterboard, basically. It, it's it's those nice neutral backgrounds that are made up of different types of papers um, that you then can go on to do something on top of, or you can use them in their neutral form. Masterboards tend to be far more involved. They're the ones with all of the bits on top, and, and then you use that then to create something like we cut them into tags and pockets. Franken paper, completely different thing altogether. And that I didn't realise. So basically, I'm going to show you. I'm going to take a couple of strips of paper. Now, the first thing that I learned today about franken paper was you don't stick it down onto anything. So I've only got this bit of paper here because I want my, my piece that I make to be this side. So that's kind of like why I got that. Um, because I'm going to do it on top of it, but I'm not going to stick it to it. But it's, it's just to kind of give me a guide so I know I don't want it to be any bigger than that. Um, so, yeah, you tend to want to look for something that's got yummy papers on both sides, really, because they're both going to be on show. Um, you would use, you know, pretty much basically whatever you've got. You know, if you've got uh, nice bits of card, scraps. Um, just think about if you're using cardstock, where you're going to place them. Um, if you're going to be cutting or folding, I would recommend you don't put any cardstock in the centre. And I will see why in a moment. Um, but yeah, so the way that you construct your franken paper is to simply take one piece and then another. And we're just going to glue literally the edge. So literally just going to go in, not even a, probably a millimetre, and then just slightly overlay. And that's it. 
and then from obviously to the other side then and it, it looks a bit like a patchwork then so what you get in one side you get in the other i hope i'm making sense i think the best thing for me to do is to just let's just make one and then you'll kind of see um you'll be able to see them what i'm talking about so i'm going to use a mixture here of um book pages of um some leftover cardstock um now not everything that i have got is double-sided and I'm not too worried about that because um, Nick, the booksmith, she made, um, she had a very good tip with hers and she stamped on any areas that were quite, you know, like bald. I know he said then, <laughs> bland, I mean, <laughs> definitely not bald. We don't mean bald on you, do we? No. Um, so I don't know. I mean, perhaps I'll just lay them out a minute and we can see what's going to fit where. Um, that might be quite nice here on the back maybe um again a little bit of stamperia cardstock there just overlay that there and um, that's possibly a bit short um yes i've got a white bit there not too worried about that though i can always just um uh what am i trying to say i don't know spit it out rachel i can always um stamp on the back of that that's what i was trying to say <laughs> or you can just put another image on the other side you know when we finish making this before we stitch you know there's nothing to stop you from them popping another you know something on top of it kind of you know like an not an embellishing it but yeah i guess so um so yeah right let's just start sticking i can't be doing laying it up like that right so i'm literally i haven't got a i can't find my little nozzle glue so i'm just gonna go at it with the very tip of my uhu and we'll get this thing put together and we'll see how it turns out. So I just kind of keep some idea there of, and you see, I'm, I'm literally just overlaying um, a minuscule amount there. It's just like literally a minuscule amount. Um, and that tends to be then the line you go down when you stitch. And it's just to hold that together and kind of knitting it all together. I think it's a brilliant method. Um, yeah, it really kind of opened my eyes today because I honestly thought, well, for a start, I thought master boards and collages were the same thing. Who knew? You all probably know this, don't you? I'm just the last of the party, as per usual. Um, and I, I just genuinely didn't understand what franking paper was. Um, it's been one of those things I've kept on kind of meaning to, like, you know, stand still and watch a tutorial or something, but... Um, I don't know, I, I, I could see the stitch and everything, but I just didn't understand the purpose of it. So, I don't know, things that complicate me these days, I tend to stay away from. <laughs> I don't go looking for trouble. If it doesn't make sense, I leave it be. That's why I make that the front there. Um, I want to be able to bend that bit there. That's a bit glimsy, that's a bit wide. No, okay, we'll go with that one then. Right. Um... I don't want it getting stuck to that page underneath. So, I hope you all had a lovely weekend and you um, had a bit of nice weather where you were. We, we've had a warning, a threat, dare I say it, here today of snow tonight. So, I hope they're wrong. I really don't want snow now. I'm, I'm like so over that now. It's, it's the wrong time of year for me. I'm ready to just, I just need spring. We don't want any snow. No, we don't want any snow. So uh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what's going on, weatherman? So I feel like saying, but um, yeah, there's a there's a threat of it. I don't think it'll just down this far south. I think the north are probably getting the worst of it. Scotland, I think, is going to get hit with it, and um, uh, you know, Northern England. But I don't, I don't think it'll come to South Wales. She says we'll, we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, it hasn't been overly warm one has to say but on the plus i did get back to quiet tonight so um that was a huge huge um bonus um and i had a lovely lovely afternoon i went for my leaving lunch um with some colleagues from my job that i've just finished um they all took me out for dinner um and oh i must show you after as well um i had the sweetest uh gift made for me um by one of the ladies in my team but i'll uh, i've left it going to say i'll go and grab that after and i must show you that before um 
I better cut that too short now. And I have looked. Honestly, Rachel, on your measure. I um Yeah, I'll have to show you what she did. But um and they gave me some vouchers as well. Oh, they were so kind. Uh, it was lovely to see them all. Um so it was like my team, you know, they they came out. I it, actually nice cafe we went to in the garden centre. I hadn't been there before. Um I don't know, I just it's not one of those things I tend to do, I guess. I'm not that age yet to be having lunches out, really, so I don't suppose I would know. You know, I, I haven't been a lady of leisure yet, have I? So I wouldn't be uh, out having lunch in my local area anyway. That's the sort of thing I do when I go on holiday. Um, but yeah, it's always fascinating, isn't it? To find out what's on your on your doorstep. I'm assuming that it's acceptable to um, cut down paper for franken paper. I don't know. I, no, I haven't come across any rules telling me otherwise, so... I'm going to cut down, cut this down a minute because I need something that's going to fit under there. And I think that'll look quite cool. What do you reckon? Bit of, um, what's this called again? Um, <laughs> embossing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My brain is just not working. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? I don't know. I'm probably nervous because I'm not quite sure if this is going to work out. And I'm like, eh, have I done the right thing doing this today now? I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, but yes, went back to choir tonight because I haven't been for a couple of weeks. Um, just been busy doing stuff. And um, we've got a concert in a week's time and we are like just seriously not prepared for it. So we went through, learned and rehearsed and practised um, something mental, like nine songs, I think, tonight. It was crazy. We did it though. And it, it sounded good, so best way to do it sometimes, isn't it? Just jump straight in there and see what you can get done. No good overthinking everything, isn't it? I do like working with um, glue stick because I do find it very um, forgiving. You know, if you're quick and you want to move something, you have the opportunity to do that, don't you? Whereas some of the glues, like... Um, ugh, Fabri-Tac, I remember using that, I was using that before. Cricky, if you didn't have that stuck together in seconds, the thing would dry in place, sometimes on your fingers. So at least with this, you have a bit of, um, there's a bit of time, a bit of time, a bit of thinking time, which is good, because my brain is not always the quickest. So there we are, do you see now what, what I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain the, the effect? So at first it might not seem terrifically stable, but, once the glue dries, and then you can stitch, and then it'll look amazing. Just amazing, I promise you. Um, I don't want anything too hard in the middle of there. And you will see for why um, in a moment. Let's use I, I'm using this one because um, it's double-sided. Um, and I thought, oh, that'll do, because I don't have a printer. <laughs> Alas! So I couldn't print onto the back of any of my many, like, pages that I've got spare here because I can't get my printer to work so it was all morning looking online trying to find a replacement but I'm a bit nervous now what to get because I need something that's going to have a good um, um, resolution because that's something else I've learned today. I've learned quite a lot today actually but apparently the higher the resolution on your printer is all to do with um, the pixelation on the printing is how many spurts it throws out out of the inkjet um, and that's why sometimes they can appear a bit greeny printing um, and others then are, are really um, you know vibrant and detailed and it's, it's to do with the amount of ink that they spurt out so obviously the higher the resolution the better the quality and the more vibrant your printing is going to be so clearly as a designer of digital papers I need something with a really good resolution. But I just couldn't make a decision today. It was just like, oh, this is too much. <laughs> too much. I can't make a decision. So I had to just turn the computer off in the end. Between that and birthday shopping for my youngest, who seems to be incapable of making a decision about anything. Oh, I'm already guess that wrong. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yes, it does, doesn't it? Um, so, of course, I'm trying to, like, sort that out as well. And I'm like, oh, come on, love, just tell me what you want. And I can make sure... Because, yeah, I know what will happen. You make a decision Friday night. Well, 
It would be too late then. It's his birthday Sunday. And nothing will be delivered. So, you know, you try to be prepared. But they don't help you out, boys. I tell you what. All three of mine are like this. Every birthday. Same at Christmas. And then they'll decide then, like, two days later. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. That ship is gone. That sailed. Is that the expression? Yes. That's, uh, you've, you've left that too late now. I'm... I'm I've already done done what needed to be done. You've missed that boat. I've made the decision for you. They should be quicker, shouldn't they? Oh, there's my scissors. That's what I'm looking for. They walked over to the other desk. Right, I'm just going to snip that down. So, I won't do any more on this now because I think that's enough to give you an idea of what Frankenpaper looks like. And that's kind of how it goes together. So, did you see the... I hope, I'm sorry, I'm saying this like I expected to answer me. Yes, Rachel, of course we did. Did you note the, the, the difference between, obviously, if I was doing a masterboard, I would be laying that an eye on to, um, you know, well, I'd be collaging onto whatever the piece of paper was that was on my desk. Um, whereas this, oh, that's very white. I think we'll cover that over with something, shall we? Should we put that on there? Whereas with this, um, I haven't, you know, stuck it down onto anything. We've got a pattern both sides. Um, and yeah, I just, it's basically, the, it's the, p the process of making a sheet of paper out of leftovers of other sheets of paper, you know, so it's making them kind of useful again, I suppose, rather than them just being, so basically that way, it means then that nothing ends up being wasted, you know, um, and it doesn't matter how big or how small they are, um, it's just that you've been able to reuse them. I knew that was going to be too low there then. I should have started at the back. Why would you not start there, Rach? Hmm? Why would you not start there? There we go. Very nice. Very nice indeed. I like it. Well, that's better than having that white bit there. So, you know, it's not a hard and fast rule that it's but the point is, as you can see, that's not... I've done that to our decoration just because my page is white. Now, I was thinking about this earlier. Those of you that don't have... Um, sorry, I'm pointing. Those of you that don't have sewing machines, I think what would be a real addition to this would be for you to use washi tape. What do you think? I think that would make it look quite different. Should we try one? Should we? Come on, Rich, put them in where your mouth is. Let's have a little look. What have you got here? Uh, hmm... Yeah, I suppose they're kind of the colours I've got there, aren't they? Um, what else have I got here? Oh, actually, should we use these? It's maybe a bit more like it. Okay, so in the absence, if you don't have a sewing machine, you can either use something perhaps of that thickness. That would work quite well if we run that down there. So obviously you can see where, if I imagine I was stitching this now, I would be running my stitches down the join there. Now, of course, if I'm stitching, I'm getting the benefit on both sides, aren't I? Whereas with a washi tape, I'm not. So you would have to go and do the other side with it. But I think that might be a, a bit of an alternative to if you don't have a sewing machine, um, even if you wanted to put washi on and then faux stitch over the top with a pen. Just an idea. I, I, I feel your frustration, you guys that don't have machines, because I didn't have one for quite a while when I first started out. And um, I think it was like the first year I was doing it. So, you know, I, I, I get it. And it's good to have an alternative, isn't it? I remember when I was working in um, many years ago. <laughs> well, I say many years ago. Well, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, a long time ago. I used to be a fitness instructor and part of what we did in my job there was about making adaptations so that basically everybody was able to do it, but just do it differently. Um, and I think sometimes crafting is the same, isn't it? You know, everybody should be able to do this, but um, if you have a barrier of whatever kind, be that lack of resources or, you know, it shouldn't stop you from being able to take part in the activity, should it? So that's down to us to kind of help you think up creative ideas to um, work around that. We all have a good workaround, don't we? Yes! Problem solving. That's my favourite thing to do. Uh, they're not my problems. <laughs> Isn't it funny how we can fix other people's problems quicker than we can fix our own? Have you ever noticed that? 
A friend comes to you and they're like, oh, I've got this problem. Oh, yeah, see, you can see, I, 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 I know what you should be doing. I know what you're doing wrong. You want to do this, you want to do that. But when it's our own problem, we can't see what's in front of our nose it sometimes, can we? I don't know. Just a thought there. Just a thought. There we go. Somewhere the half is back today, regaling me with tales of his trip up to see the Only Fools and Horses cast. But, um, yeah, he had a great time. Some old stars there. Well, old being the operative word, I didn't recognise a lot of them on those pictures. But, um, came back with another blinking panel off the side of a van. Oh, dear me. I said to him before he went, do not, do not, under any circumstances, bring back another section of that blinking Robin Reliant van. We've already got a door on our bedroom wall. But it's actually in the wardrobe because I wouldn't let him put it on the bedroom wall. Um, but there, in my bedroom, on the wall, on the wall is a panel. It's about... Oh, you can't see my arms. <laughs> I'm doing this outside of here. It's, it is literally about a metre long, I think. This bright yellow panel. I don't know how many of you have heard of Only Fools and Horses. It's Del Boy and Rodney. I, I know everybody in the UK will have heard of them. Um, I'm not quite sure how far they reach is. But they drive around in this yellow, yellow Robin Reliant van. This three-wheel van. Um, and basically, when you go up to the convention, there's a guy up there that sells replica doors off the van a back door and he does the panel with all the sign writing on that is in the actual program um and of course people buy them and they get them signed then so my other half is a collector and i can't i'm not making any comment i know i i make junk journals the house is full of junk stuff so i can't talk but he, he, he is a collector of stuff and i tend to use the word junk quite often but anyway moving on so he and he likes to collect memorabilia and things that are autographed and signed. Um, I think he's been doing that since he was about ten. So suffice to say, our attic is full of well, just useless stuff. But anyway, so he, the last couple of times he's gone, he's come back. He came back first of all with the door, then with the panel. So then my sister in law was making fun and asked him if he was building his own Robin Reliant. <laughs> Um, and then we had our, I think it was in COVID, we, we redecorated our room and built our own fitted wardrobes because the bedroom's tiny. Um, and we couldn't get like the wardrobe in there and the bed and the chest of drawers and move around it very well. So we decided to build wardrobes into like the alcove space. And um, when we went up then the next time to um, the, the convention, he brought back the blooming door. So he's got that now inside the where the chimney breast was behind one of the wardrobe doors is in there on the wall um but this blinking panel is on my bedroom wall so i had my lovely new bedroom decorated and then i got a, a van panel on the wall with autographs on it so he came home then yesterday uh, today then with another one so i just shook my head and i came in and like really this is ridiculous and i said well that's not going up in my bedroom so i said you can put that out in your man cave because he's built a gym over there again over covid um it's just a block building at the back you know um <laughs> but all of his stuff is slowly shifting out there you know i don't know how much gymming goes on out there i think it's more just putting up shelves and <laughs> putting all his memorabilia around but i don't care my house is getting lighter so he can crack on keeps him happy but i did laugh today but he, he did he had they, they'd all signed this one he, he had today so uh he was well chuffed with that but Oh, you make me laugh. I was looking at the pictures. I said, you walk around with that blinking panel on <laughs> the side of a little van in your arm. I said, they must have thought you were daft. And of course, when I looked at the photos, they were all gone on there. I said, oh, dear me. So they see you lot coming, honestly. But there we are. What would we come back with, eh, from a junk journal convention, I wonder? Oh, I imagine a junk journal convention. How cool would that be? Blimey. Right, I think that looks quite good, actually. And that feels now like really, it's made it feel really sturdy. To think that we've just made that now out of scraps. I think that looks really good. So there you go. If you don't have, um, if you don't have a sewing machine or you just don't feel like sewing, stitching, sewing, yeah. Um, get your washi tape out, guys, and, and tape up those joins with the washi tape. Because it is kind of the same effect. He's just a sticky-taped Frankenstein instead of um, stitched. 
Now, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Because I'm the queen of here's one I made earlier at the moment, aren't I? Because I'm trying to save you time. So, here's one I made earlier. This one I have stitched to show you the full effect. Do you see what I mean about Frankenstein? I think it looks awesome. I think it's really cool, actually. Um, and I purposely put red thread in there just to make it boing, stand out. But that there is your franking paper. So that's the effect you will get after putting your strips together and then stitching around them. And I mean, I've stitched like every join, I think. Yeah. Oh, I've missed one. Oh, how could I miss one? Um, I mean, you don't have to stitch every join, obviously. Um, but yeah. Now, the only thing I will say to you is, bear in mind that when you turn it over, your stitching is not going to be necessarily on your joints because obviously you've got the fold over, haven't you? So it's never going to be perfect. But I really like that and it feels really sturdy, really sturdy. So what I want to do with mine is I'm going to make it into um, a little journal cover because I think that that would look superb i really do but i don't really want to leave this um you know as the inside bit because well, it's just a bit rough for me that I, I i can work with that that's, that's okay but this i'm not so fussed about so that's why i wanted to see if well, i made this one a bit big look um but the thing is, I don't really want to cut that down either because I like the Edith Holden on it. So I'm going to have to have a little think about that. Um, and while I think about that, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to catch up and to go away and make your own um, board, Franken board papers, um, and see what patterns you come up with and whether or not you can stitch yours or whether or not you are going to washi tape them. But that there is two examples of how you can create your own franken paper and i will come back to this tomorrow i promise you we will move on to something and i will show you then what we're going to do with them um but for, for today i'm just going to give you that because i don't want you getting overwhelmed and you keep asking me for scrap challenges so there you go you can get rid of and these really are the rubbishy scraps do you know what i mean these are the ones we don't make well they're not rubbishy scraps but well yeah they are that there is that's just the, the turn off torn off bit of some really badly coloured coffee dye paper I mean it looks cool but I wouldn't use it in a cluster do you know what I mean so um yeah I just think they look great so tomorrow bring your franken papers and we will work with them and we will jazz them up okay I hope you enjoyed learning all about that today guys and if you already knew all of that well well done you because you were a step ahead of me I um I missed some bits at the beginning because I skipped on ahead I think and but I, I I missed it. This is a fundamental I think and I missed this this lesson. I obviously skipped that class that day, didn't I? Um, but have a lovely evening. Thank you for spending some time with me and I will be back with you all tomorrow with the next part of our Franken paper. So take care. See you soon. Bye now.